get blocked because of that we face challenges we face blockages how much ever talented we are how much ever skillful we are sometimes we do so much of hard work but we realize why are we not growing in this field the reason is somewhere something the energy is getting blocked and today we will understand how beautifully now we can actually clean our aura how what is a mechanism how does the chakras work in our body what what exactly it means to live a spiritually aligned life to actually be uh, having everything in abundance in materialistic world and sometimes i feel that overall the planet earth is going through a vibrational change it's no more a choice for anyone now it has become mandatory to understand how to live your highest potential because the person who understand how to live a highest potential trust me you will ease your life you will get on with your life so effortlessly and that's the magic which we are going to create today by understanding the how to maintain our uh, chakra cleansing how to have our aura always strong and powerful so that we can attract abundance in our life i don't want to delay it we just want to jump into the training and we have something beautiful amazing person i have literally want to spend time on her profile because she deserves it now she is one of the top renowned reiki grandmasters from india the top notch reiki grandmasters from india trust me how we connected with her in google we went and typed the top notch great reiki grandmaster in india and the first name which came in is her name now she is a terra mai reiki grandmaster with 25 years of healing experience has taken holistic healing as her mission to promote healthy and happy living she has been practicing healing through a combination of terra mai reiki bark flowers remedy and naturopathy she has also initiated hundreds of reiki healers and continues to teach every day every day every day she continues to heal and help people with her wisdom and knowledge assisting people who are facing challenges in their life and has it actually has become her passion and occupation you will realize it when you, when she speaks the words she continues to learn and evolve every single day no wonder she jumped into a new frequency therapy mechanism learned it perfectly and today she is available for us to give training uh, her knowledge is always inspires each one of us everyone in the path of spiritual great growth greater awareness and consciousness i literally can't list out the healing modalities she has more than 25 plus healing modalities which she is teaching right now in her as a passion and occupation she is based out in chennai a mother of beautiful a uh, daughter and a handsome son a grand uh, mother of three kids three beautiful angels i have a big list of her healing modalities i can just call out few of them she is an expert in teaching hypnotherapy crystal healing pyramid healing art of living basic and advanced bark flowers terra mai reiki level 1 and 2 reiki mastership reiki grand mastership uh, saichum uh, forgive me if i'm pronouncing it wrong cosmic terra mai reiki magnified healing level 1 2 and 3 i mean the list goes on uh, i mean literally tell me something are you guys excited and looking forward to hear learn understand how to make your aura strong aura therapy how to live a spiritual life aligned from this great reiki grandmaster none other than Mrs. Kirti Dasha, all the way from Chennai, for us live today. Thank you, ma'am, for being available for us. Love you so much, ma'am. All yours. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being present over here, and. Um, thank you uh, the healy team for trusting me and giving me this opportunity to share a little knowledge what i have acquired in my life journey 
and my speciality is definitely aura because from the day i joined healy i have been after them that i want more information about how does the healy does the aura analysis because i have been using other equipments earlier also and rightly like how nina said anything latest comes i just want to experience it i just want to have it you know and once i have it and once i use it i definitely enhance my practice and definitely help more people with it and that's what is happening with healy now every day i'm running healy on people who come to me and i can see a great difference in their life now let us come to now know what is aura and what are chakras so aura is a bioenergetic field it is all around us and anybody will have an aura we all have an internal aura external aura and it just just merges with each other okay any living non living thing everybody will have some kind of energy or the other but how is your aura that matters the most and what does it contain and how does it contain what it has it doesn't begin with this life it is a blueprint of all the life you have gone through all the incarnations you have gone through and it carries the information of it and it's not that all the information is going to be coming to the surface in this birth just like how we have in the bank fixed deposits some lying you know for 10 years there inside and multiplying it or some you just encash it when you want like that in your aura there are blueprints of your karmic connections karmic journey what you have gone through in all this life and all the information of positive or negative experiences of your life so we all are aware of only of this life and we think and we connect thinking that i have not done anything wrong in this life why god is doing this to me but god is not free there sitting there to pinpoint some mr x y z and punishing that person there no we are the creator of our own life and same way we can also uncreate what we do not choose to have any more in our life and that can happen only in this human birth in the animal birth they have to go through the karma they have no choices in the plants formation they have no choices a mango tree cannot say i want to have sweet mangoes only okay a tiger cannot say that oh i am hungry today but i don't feel like hunting so let me swiggy or zomato or something no you cannot even say that today i'll do fast and i'll just eat some fruits they cannot do that they have to live in the nature we the human beings the most powerful the most evolutionized existence on this mother earth is the human beings and we can choose to do what we need to do with our life so it is our journey from the moment you are born in your mother's womb we are carrying the impressions of your all your past life and as we take birth whichever family we are born in they acquire their belief system knowingly or unknowingly the language the culture the religion and the geographical area where you are staying to acquire the consciousness of that geographical area also the do's and don'ts of the place where you are staying and then your own schooling what type of education you receive to start making your rights and wrongs and then your own life experiences makes you create some belief in your life of being right and wrong and what does that do that judgment of being right and wrong blocks the universal energies which is flowing into you we all are part of the same universal consciousness the consciousness and the universe is equal to all of us but how do we create our own consciousness our own space it depends on the belief system what we are creating and each belief system what you have it starts with your birth time itself so here let me tell you something about tell it about the seven chakras in our body the first chakra is the root chakra the mooladhara the main existence the main foundation of your survival is the root chakra moment the baby is born 
just want to survive. The human baby cannot survive on his own. And so it's asked for help. How? It cries for every need of its. And irrespective of the young mother is very tired or, you know, very um, in some other place where she can't attend the baby or they are flying somewhere or they are in a public place, the child doesn't hesitate to express its needs. And when the needs are fulfilled, the baby goes on crying and sometimes the young mother is at a total loss. I have fed the baby, the baby is dry, the baby is okay, there is no fever, nothing. And why still the baby is crying? The baby simply expresses his desire, I need to survive and these are my needs and you please take care of it. And here we all are the baby ones. But now what has happened to us? We have acquired belief system and we think, Oh, can I do this over here? Can I talk like this over here? Can I express like this here? What will people think about me? We have so many fears and scarcities and insecurities with us. And that is what imbalances your root chakra. So this insecurities comes from where in the baby? From the adults around us, from the atmosphere. Have you ever told your child that do this, others I'm going to leave you and go? The first fear comes into the child. Oh, my parents, they are the center of my existence. And they can abandon me. The fear of abandonment comes. And as an adult also, they are always clinging to people. Because they are afraid if somebody will leave me and go, let me please them. Let me do what they say. You know, losing their own existence, they are ready to live like other people and bringing fear into their life. When the root chakra is balanced, you have enough courage and you always live in abundance. What is abundance? What is scarcity? Scarcity is a state of mind. Abundance also is a state of mind. If you live in scarcity, you will always attract scarcity in your life. Scarcity of relationship, scarcity of health, scarcity of finances, scarcity of every struggle in your life. Throughout your life, you say, why am I struggling so much? But it is some seeds have sown in you as from the parent or the, from the people around you, feeding you with negative information, creating fear inside you. And the child knowingly or unknowingly absorbs this energy, bringing an imbalance in the root chakra. A healthy root chakra in a child, right time they eat, right time they walk, right time they talk, right time they have the muscle movements. And they will grow very courageously. Have you seen a toddler? You see a toddler in a mall. They are so free. They go and pick up anything and say, I want this. Not realizing my father may not be afford, able to afford this. Or it is too harmful for me to use this at this time. They don't care about anything. They express themselves. And they are the most confident people. Most confident souls, you know. They will cry to the top of their voice. If they don't get anything expressing their desire that I really want this right now, not knowing why the parents are saying no. The same child right now, we as an adult, what do we do? We have so many insecurities, so many fears. And as a result, the root chakra get imbalanced, bringing depression, suicidal tendencies, lack, limitations, scarcity. And a single thought, even a single thought, if you create, which is not true to you. But just now, if you imagine yourself, I can have anything in this world what I choose to have. You are changing the energy of your root chakra. And when your root chakra starts vibrating at that frequency, automatically the universe will decide. The universe will bring what is right for you at the right time. You need not even work for it, but when you create the energy there. And the best way to create, this is what has worked for me. From the day I started my Reiki practice more than 25 years back, I had decided the first day itself that 10% of my money will go back to the charity. So that way, I'm always living in abundance, thinking that I have more than what I need. So I can give always. And when I'm giving it to the back to the society, I'm sowing the seeds of more abundance coming into my life. 
So anybody who's living in scarcity, just change your thought form and give anything what you have. It can be a smile, it can be information, it can be one small food packet, or it can be your time, or it can be the money, whatever you can give. But never think that I don't have enough, so how can I give? I always have more than enough, and your root chakra is sorted. The next chakra, I'm going to be very brief because I want to give more time on aura analysis with the Healy, which I've really worked on today, you know. So the next chakra is the navel chakra connected with our emotional body. Now Seven you want to, to the PPT? You want to share the PPT, the slide? Yeah, if I can, yeah, I, I would love to do that. Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, you have the, uh, one second. I'll... You can, you Rajendra, can, can... Yes, yeah. Yes, ma'am, you can share. You can share, ma'am. Okay, I have to open my this thing to go. Um, Click on share, ma'am. Yeah, let okay. me see. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, what is open? Up. Let me see. Yeah. yeah, it came up, ma'am. Yeah. So this is the aura of a person, and these are the seven chakras over here. If a person's aura is fully balanced and they are in the root chakra, the red color will be like this. And all the chakras will be balanced and they will be living in abundance of health, wealth and everything in their life. Let me see what is the next thing I want to show. I want to show actually my PPT. No, 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 not here. It will take one minute. I just need to go to my uh, computer and do that. So Kirti ma'am is just setting up the PPT, just few uh, seconds more. So we just learned from her about the root chakra part. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's coming up. Yeah, it came up. Yeah. You, you can see it, right? Yes, yes. So I'll start again with what is an aura. It is a bioenergetic field that surrounds every person and all living and non-living things. Auras are influenced by thoughts, patterns, and vice versa. Any energy is positive and negative in your aura will affect you physically with time. Okay, that's how the diseases come into us. And aura is inner and external. The human body has seven major chakras. We have many, many chakras, but the seven chakras are connected to our main glandular system. And the predominance of a chakra in a person influences the aura and consequently their personality. So we have done with, like, this is how our aura looks. Each person's aura can change in color, size, and intensity according to the mental and emotional state of that person. All these negative energies first settle in our aura before manifesting as disease in our physical body. Now, this is very, very important for you to know. You think it's a harmless thought. But that thought is a seed for you to sow some diseases in your body if it's a negative thought. It can be a simple thought of insecurity, a simple thought of jealousy, or simple thought of anything which you think is harmless and is not going to affect me because people can't see. I'm wearing a smile, but I'm carrying a thought inside. But the energy knows. And if you carry on that pattern, that behavior pattern throughout your life, after 15, 20 years, it manifests in your, first in your aura, and then in your chakras, and then it comes in your physical body, depending on whichever chakra you are focusing more in your life. Okay? So the first chakra, as I said, is the root chakra or the muladhara chakra, red in color. And it has a beige mantra. You can chant the beach mantra to change your energy. But I always think the thought works very, very powerfully on you. Okay? 
So it is connected with the earth element. The earth is the densest of all the elements, and our physical body is made of earth element. That's why when you die, you become a part of the earth again, right? You get burned or buried. So we go back to the earth again. So this physical body being the densest, all our dense organs of our body are connected with the root chakra. So anybody having skeletal issues, joint issues, pain in the physical body, it's all because of some fear, some insecurity, some lack of limitations you're holding inside your root chakra. So if it is very, very balanced, even if you don't have a bank balance, and if you're living in abundance, you have a healthy root chakra, which will give you more than enough for you to live. Abundance is what I have more than enough for this moment. That is abundance. Living in the present moment is extremely important. A person can lose some part of their money and they'll say, oh, it's gone. And they start living in lack or limitation, attracting more of it. So every day, if your body is healthy, if you have enough meals for the day, enough money or roof or job or a family next to you, you are abundant because we don't know next day God will bless us with this life force energy or not. Okay, So always live in abundance. And if it is imbalanced, the person will be always stressed, will attract accidents in the life. Accidents don't happen by chance. There are no coincidences on this world. Everything is because you are creating that energy. And low life energy, scarcity, survival, abundance issues, all will bring this depression and suicidal tendencies. Why do you think film stars have to go into depression? When they have enough money, name, fame, occupation, everything, but still they'll have some scarcity inside their mind regarding some issues which we may not be aware of. And that only brings that. So every time you feel low in your life, start counting your blessings. Start counting what you have. And start contributing something wherever you can. And you will see you are changing the energy of your root chakra. The next chakra is our sacral chakra, orange in color. It is three finger below our navel. And this is a place of your consciousness, swadhisthana. Swa plus adhisthana. Myself residing over here. My consciousness stays over here. It's connected with the water element, your emotional body. And related body areas are huh? our sexual parts, our bladder, prostate, reproductive system, desires. All desires come from here. Now understand, if the water is always flowing, the water is free flowing. It doesn't smell, doesn't stain. You can drink that water. Anything stagnated, it will start stinking. Like that, our emotions, we need to let go of what we need not hold on to. And allow the more energy to flow in. If this chakra is balanced, you'll be very creative, productive, and you'll have like everything is balanced in the sense we are human beings, we are not animals, right? So even when a desire comes up, we know how to regulate our desires. It's not that we give into our desires and become like animals, right? Because we are a higher evolved beings. So when you're able to balance your desires at the right time to do the right thing, living in state with your consciousness and awareness, your navel chakra is balanced. But now because of your desires which you're unable to control, it's like, you know, you're giving a racing car in a 12-year-old hand and he will definitely meet with accidents. Like that, people who cannot control their desires, they go into emotional upheavals and attacking negative things in their life. And this imbalance is that emotional body in a very, very bad way. So that, I don't know how to put it, but that's how people go into rape or, you know, murder because they want to fulfill their needs and desires. And at that time, they are not in connection with the consciousness at all. They are totally giving way to their desires. So 7 to 14, if anybody having the children, they are going through this phase because they are going through puberty, they are going through hormonal imbalances, and the desires are coming up. In the house, if the atmosphere is like that, where they can talk openly to the parents about what the desires are coming up on the physical level, 
mental level, emotional level. We are looking for some answers for it. If the parents provide that atmosphere, then they'll not go and seek it out. Otherwise, today's children can go to Google and internet and peers, you know, they can go into anything. And then they'll be misguided. And after that, they'll start this chakra is chakra of manipulation. If it becomes overactive, people become very manipulative. They go to any extent to lie, cheat, or kill to achieve what they want in their life. If this chakra is underactive, they'll not have any desires, they'll have infertility issues, impotency, or any kind of imbalance in the uterus for the um, um, woman. Because for a woman, this chakra changes every 28 days moon cycle. So women are emotions. Women cannot connect with another human being without being emotionally connected. But a man can have an intimate relationship without having any kind of emotions. Why? Because for the man, this chakra doesn't change. For the man, the chakra which changes during puberty is that throat chakra. The voice cracks. Isn't it? So man is more... A woman can say anything and they'll start crying along with that. Even if it's tears of joy or tears of sorrow. A woman, a man can say the same thing without any kind of emotions. Because for them, this chakra doesn't change at all. During the full moon and new moon also, just like we have high tide and low tide, like that people having mental issues, you will see, can have more of agitation, migraine issues, indigestion issues. Because this chakra is constantly changing during at that time for everybody because we all are made out of 70% water. Always my focus in my class is always these two chakras because we are living in this lower realm all the time because of the lifestyle what we are having it. The next is the solar plexus chakra which is yellow in color. At the time child comes to say 14. 14 to 21, they live in this chakra. Today's children by 10 also, they are already living in this chakra. One word they'll tell to the parents, I know, you don't have to tell me anything. Because this is a chakra of mental ability, the power, the zeal, the motivation. What do you want to achieve in your life? You get through this chakra. Now the fire, if it is controlled, it can cook your meal, it can give you warmth. If the fire is let loose, it can burn your whole house also. Like that, we need to have a balanced solar plexus where we know where to exert what power and how to deal with it. So a CEO of company can be a leader exerting different powers there and at home can be a son or can be a brother or can be a husband or can be a father dealing with the family in a different way. So this chakra is very, very important to be balanced because you can become a leader or a dictator or you can become a king or a benevolent, loving person by balancing this solar plexus. So these three chakras are constantly working for us in everyday life. And how to keep them in balance? By working on your heart chakra. The heart chakra is an air element. Now tell me the air in your body. It is 24-7 there you are breathing. But it is constantly moving, isn't it? You are letting go. You are breathing in, breathing out. Like that in your heart chakra, you must have love and forgiveness. Breathe in love and breathe out forgiveness to everybody. Do not hold anything in your heart and have lots and lots of gratitude. The moment you are grateful for everything what you have, you are telling the universe, I have so much. And when you have so much, your root chakra is automatically getting balanced because it shows you have abundance. Okay, so the best way to balance your root chakra and the other lower chakras is by working on your heart chakra. In the solar plexus is always the I or the ego. The heart chakra is always we or us. You can never be alone in your heart center. It's always you'll be somebody you'll be loving, somebody you'll be forgiving, somebody you'll be accepting, you know. So there is always us or we. So anytime things don't happen your way, at least it's happened somebody else's way, be happy with that. And the moment you do that, the solar plexus is taken care of. Because the solar plexus is a chakra which manifests as diseases in your body. This is a chakra where we hold on to all our mental thought forms 
and something happened 10 years before also we are unable to forgive and causing imbalance in our physical body or bringing diseases in your life. Resentment, bitterness, what you can't swallow, what you can't digest, you know, jealousy, anger, all this uh, pride, all these causes major diseases in your body. And the best way to work on that is with your heart chakra. The throat chakra, the chakra of Vishuddhi chakra, self purification, the ether element, the lightest of all the elements. Here, the self purification happens. And if you allow things to happen, that means if you are open to change in your life, if you trust the universe, if you allow divine plan to take over, and if you do not worry, this chakra remains balanced. This chakra is with your higher creativity. And this chakra is well developed. Whatever you say, you can manifest it. But if you are talking out of fear, or if you are unable to stand up for yourself and suppressing what you need to say, Later on, this chakra will cough it out. And that's why sometimes in old age, you see people are coughing it out constantly and no medicine is able to help them because throughout their life, they would have suppressed what they wanted to express. So it's always good to express and you need to stand up for yourself. And this chakra represents I am. I am the consciousness and have the courage to speak up the truth. Whenever you feel that, that is the, at that moment, that is the truth for you. You may not think that what the other person is thinking as a truth, but you must have the courage to speak or express yourself. And the third eye chakra, chakra of decision making, intuition, memory, concentration, spiritual energy, the master gland. The moment you start focusing on there, meditating or pranayama, or just concentrating on that center. It secretes hormones to all your seven chakras. It is connected with the pituitary gland, the major gland of the body. It secretes hormones to the rest of the trans glandular system. So if this chakra and your root chakra, listen to this, if your eye chakra and if your root chakra is in balance, nobody can stop you from achieving what you want in your life. Because you are crystal clear with your goal and there is no fear that how this will manifest. So I always think uh, that... Ma'am, uh, previous slide, can you show people who are not able to see? The throat chakra? Uh, yes. Yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah, this one. Oh, Ma'am, can chakra. you uh, uh, maximize the screen so that it is more clear? If you My can screen is only maximized only. Uh, is there, Please is continue, there, no problem. Down there are three buttons are there. You click on the slide. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Slide right, show. So slide show. The, the left yeah. side, the percentage is coming. Huh? Near that one button is there. You see? Near the percentage. Ah, yeah, yeah. Please. And this? Okay. Yeah. Is it okay? You want me to say anything about this? Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Similarly, we must have our spiritual bank balance. And that is in your blueprint or in your aura. And how do you make a spiritual bank balance? By being honest, by being truthful, by being compassionate, by being loving, by being living in gratitude, by not worrying what's going to happen, you know. So when you attract all positive things in your life and you bring that into your aura, you are manifesting or creating a spiritual bank balance. And then you can attract what you choose into your life. If I'm manifesting this and I'm having fear, or I'm living in lack of scarcity, or I'm jealous of somebody else growing better than me, your spiritual bank balance is not going to increase and you may not get what you choose to have. So always work on your spiritual bank balance and just have faith. If here what I'm creating at this moment is good, my future is going to bring that into present. My past, I can undo what I choose to do, focus on my present and manifest my future. So the third eye chakra is extremely important and always listen to your intuition. How do you listen to your intuition? How do you know your intuition is good or not? How do you know your intuition is true or not? By listening to your body. Your body is closely connected to your soul and your breath. And your gut, yes. Then, thoda sa or kam kar dijiye, because it's completely not visible. Just click on minus sign once. Thoda sa kam karu. Minus sign once. One more time. Now it's visible. Yeah. So, if I'm thinking of something, and if my body reacts, and the body is happy with that thought, that means. Your intuition is correct and your thought is apt for you. Because your body always knows what is not right for you. If your body is showing some kind of nervousness, some kind of fear inside it, you wait till that feeling pass and then you do that. You are going to do that with that vibration of, you know, discomfort in your body. You will not going to get success in your life. And that's why listen to your intuition and listen to your body at the same time. If they both are in harmony, your mind and body, soul, mind and body, if they are in harmony, you can manifest everything what you choose in your life. And the last is the crown chakra from where the divine energy comes into us. It is violet in color, again the ether element. And this is connected with our pineal gland, the most important gland of our body, which is connecting with our spiritual energy, which is coming to you. And giving us the knowledge of right or wrong, or hot and cold, or uh, night or day. All that thing comes, the instinct comes only from this pineal gland. So if it is very imbalanced, then people can have all mind-related issues. Okay, bipolar or schizophrenia. Or you would have attracted some negative energies which get stuck in your crown chakra. So it's always important to get connected to the universal energies. The universe energies are totally equal and totally pure for everyone. It doesn't judge anybody. So how do you connect to the universal energies? By respecting your own faith, your own religion, your own gurus, at the same time respecting everybody else's. At this, in this birth, you might have gone birth in as an Indian or myself, I'm a Jain family, or I have my certain uh, Tithankaras whom I follow next birth or last birth, where I was, I don't know, right? So I need to respect each and every divine being, whosoever, whatever they are following. And by keeping these seven chakras in your balance, you can achieve many, many things in your life. And why this aura is important? Because these chakras are connected to all the seven layers of your aura. So how the chakra is vibrating, that reflects the energy in your aura, and that reflects the energy which you are extending yourself to the external world. And that's why you are attracting what you want in your life. And how do you set right that? Now we got a Healy to do that for us. Isn't it? So we can practice your, our meditation practice or Reiki practice or whatever practices. Healy will enhance all of those things with you. And I have an aura scanner which shows the aura of a person. Okay. How the aura is and how I showed you the seven chakras. Now, what is the difference? I'm going to close this. 
going to start with telling you that what is the difference with aura and the bioenergetic field which the heal is working on. There is a great difference. You know what is the difference? The aura is an information field connected to only to me. It doesn't resonate in the quantum world. It doesn't resonate in the quantum. Uh, at most, I don't know what is the word to say that. But uh, anybody can help me with that. Okay, it, 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 my own aura cannot get connected to the quantum entanglement. But my information field, it is vibrating everywhere. Okay, it is not limited to me. Aura in our traditional say, we say, you know, that the a holy person will have a very big halo around that. That is the simple term of aura what we talk about. But in Healy, what they talk about aura, the bioenergetic field or information field which can be connected to quantum entangle and if they radiate some frequency there and if it matches with our frequency it brings a change in our chakras and it is not connecting with the aura it is connected to your chakra frequency that's why in aura analysis they don't show the color of the aura they are showing only seven chakras and whatever the frequency it is vibrating at and whatever information it is clo closest to that data what they have what is closest to our information in our chakra it is connecting that and giving us a reading about it so you want to um, i just want to first tell you about how the aura analysis in healy works and then i think um, we are going to do a live demo and we'll do a analysis with that also is that okay Am I correct, Lina? Yeah. So, when you, do, yeah, when you do an aura analysis in uh, Healy, I have noticed because Healy is extremely sensitive to your intentions and your vibration. So, when you take your aura analysis, it's not that when you remain calm on the physical level. It's not that you are in a silent room. That's enough. No. Whatever is running in your head has to be very crystal clear of what you want to choose to analyze. Okay? Example I can give you. Let's suppose my throat chakra. Okay? I want to work on my throat chakra and I want to know why my throat chakra is sore. Why am I having pain in my throat chakra? Then I have to ask Healy that let me know. I will choose to know why there is pain or what is the imbalance in my throat chakra right now and focus on that. And then when I analyze, the Healy will show me that reading. Or I can say, oh, I know this is Vishuddhi chakra. Self-purification is happening. I'm working on this chakra on the spiritual level. So I want to know whether the technique I'm running, the technique I'm practicing, is this really clearing my throat chakra? So I put that intention Healy is going to connect me to that vibration. Okay? Or a simple thing I can say, but tell me what at what uh, level my chakra is uh, vibrating right now or what I information it is going is holding on to it right now. Anything I need to ask crystal clear, then I will get the apt reply. If we are just thinking of something, but sitting quietly because my aura analysis is getting done. Healy can give you mixed results. Why? Because there are thousands of things which are happening in every chakra of yours. And we know the same frequency. It's not going to be stable there. Just like if I take a photograph now with my hand moving, it will show so many different, different pictures of my hand in different, different way, right? Unless I keep it stable, it will show me one picture again and again and again. If I'm fixing one smile, it will show me that smile. But if I keep dancing, it will show me different pictures. Like that, this frequency is constantly changing and Healy is capturing that because it's highly sensitive equipment. So we need to be stable. We need to have a focus and you can choose to ask whatever information you need to know about it. Is that clear? And then we have some features of how many readings you want, okay? One to 10, or high potency or negative potency we want or not. When you ask for the negative potency, that negative relevancy option, if you're on it, 
Healing will give you information which you are not aware of on your conscious level. It can be somewhere deep down inside and you will say, I don't think it's giving me a right reading right now because you are not even prepared what really is going to unfold for you. And if the person who is doing the analysis for you, if they don't have enough knowledge, in-depth knowledge of the auras and chakras, or they don't have in-depth knowledge of how to analyze the Healy, whatever report is doing, then also they may not be able to help their client. So I suggest if you are beginning and if you are learning, go with one or two options. Don't go in too many things to know about yourself. Learn which is the most important. Just when you choose one option, it will show you the topmost what is required for you at that time. And then after you run the Healy also, you must keep checking on yourself. This reading has come. What is happening with me after I run the aura analysis? When I'm vibrating it, what kind of changes I'm seeing in myself? You will see major changes happening in one or two days of life of after you've done the vibration on you. So the frequencies are changing. And we don't say, oh, Healy is going to work on me. I don't have to do anything about it. No, Healy is giving you a mirror. Healy is showing you that where you need to work upon. And you consciously work upon it with your healing techniques or changing your behavior pattern or letting go of what you need to let go. And then the Healy is going to support you. It's not that one. Healy is going to bring magic into your life just because you ignore to work on yourself and you expect only Healy to work on you. That is not your create. Ma'am, shall I share? Yes, you can. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So basically what are we doing here? I have my a small genie. I call it a genie in my hand. And uh, this is what Kirti ma'am was explaining. Healy in my hand, a frequency therapy mechanism. So what are we doing? We are connecting to the app. We are connecting to the Healy. And we are, Kirti ma'am will explain the aura analysis therapy. So I have already captured. I have a a demo client available here. So I'm going to use a demo client. Basically, we are going to capture the prana energy which flows through your uh, information field passing through your mind, body and soul, which I have already done. I have already captured the prana energy of a person. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get into the aura analysis because that's what we want to learn. And uh, yes, ma'am. So it is now recording, okay? It is interpreting how your energy field is. And when you analyze it, it will show you your chakras. So we are using the old Healy, uh, this thing. This is the yes, old, blue, old yes, blue app you are using, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. New one? No, no. Uh, new one has uh, some server upgrade happening. That's why I connected with the old one. Okay. Okay, so the Healy will always um, tick mark the lowest three, okay? The lowest three which you need to give attention now, anything below 80 or the lowest three, it will record it. And you can choose to only record, get a reading of those lowest three or you can tick mark all the seven chakras if you want to know about it. Yeah? So right now, Lena, we are having only three? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then we st when you start analysis also, put the intention that I want to know about these three chakras, what it is representing in my reading, okay? And yeah, so include high negative frequency relevances. That's what I say, if you are good enough, if you know that, yes, I can explain this to my client or I'm ready to accept what the heal is reading for me, go for it. Otherwise, don't go for it at the moment. Now, it is showing you the present state, present state description and desired state. It is not very important for you to read this. You know why? Because this is generic. Okay? 
This will only give an idea. It's not personalized. It is generic. So when you have to analyze this, the most important thing what you need to do know is percentage. What does the percentage mean? Ninety-three percentage means the relevance to this data which is coming to you, connecting to what database they have there. It is the most relevant data here. So it is most likely to be very closer to your frequency. Okay, that comes with the percentage. Then the number eight. The eight number shows what intensity. How important this is to you, and how present this vibrations or this information is there in your aura right now in your chakras. So, if it is number eight, you have to really work on it because it is existing right now, and you have to work a little bit more for it. More work or required, or more effort is required. And when you say B, B means physical level. That means it has been there for a long time in your auric field because nothing comes on the physical level without being in the energy field for a longer time. So when you had to learn your lessons, when you had to let go, or when in your childhood it has come up and you are still holding on to it. So right now it is coming on the physical level. So you need to again work more on it because it's already manifested in your body or in your life. And then comes one e twelve. One e twelve. Just imagine the technology of healing. It is able to go through subtle vibrations of yours and capture the information. So when you say one e, it shows something which is on the karmic level. Or parental level, or grandparents level, or ancestor level. Okay, so here one e twelve is grandparents. That means this state of your energy is coming from your grandparents to you, and by changing your frequency, even if your grandparents are alive or not alive, their frequencies are there in the quantum world. It can change their frequency also, and you can heal. In your present, your frequencies also, and release that belief pattern. So I think I'm clear with that. We'll just take this what it is showing. No, no, we'll read one of the thing. Okay, the present state. Just go down, Nina. We'll read that. Yeah, the person can understand other people because. Which one, ma'am? You're reading. Okay, the sorry. first one only. The first one yeah. only will read. Yes. Hmm? A person can understand other people because of their spiritualized attitude, but lacks real understanding and compassion. Okay, so this is the present state coming from the grandparents. So their grandparents can be having this kind of energy, and the person is acquired in this life this energy, and the person has the power to change this energy in this life of them and of their grandparents. So the heart chakra is shining in the forehead chakra color indigo. So when the chakra of the heart is green, and if other chakra it is shining in other color, that means it is in the wrong place. The person is thinking more from here instead of feeling from the heart. Okay, so the work has to be done that they need to start feeling from the heart and not thinking from the higher level of the spiritual chakra. The desire state is very again generic, so you can go through that or you can. Analyze yourself that where I need to change myself. I am holding like this attitude, you know. Think on yourself, and you bring a change in your work or your attitude about. It, yeah. Yes, you can go for the next thing. Okay. See here, it is showing only again ninety percent. That means it's most relevant. The information is most relevant to you and is appropriate to you. Again, number eight is there. LM, LM means it is in your belief system, and your soul has acquired this on the spiritual level also. So when we say here mental and spiritual, you have created that. It's not that you are a spiritual person and from there it is coming. Your belief system, which you have acquired with the thought form, has come to now this level on the spiritual level. So you can change it easily. Okay, anything on the physical level, it takes time to change. But mental and spiritual, you can change it easily. So here it is showing 
as there is change in the person's attitude towards parenthood, which the person is aware of. What does it mean? Here, the, parent, the person knows that as a parent, I want to raise my baby this way. But they have acquired the belief system from the parents. No, you have to bring up your baby this way. You have to do this way. You have to do this way. And they are bringing that belief system of their parents and they are raising their children. So that is causing an imbalance in their sacral chakra, emotion, because they want to express their creative in a different way, but they are following the belief system what they have received earlier and they are following only that. So that is bringing an imbalance towards their whatever present state they are holding about how to raise their children. So the ch sacral chakra is shining in the color turquoise. What does it mean? That means it's on the spiritual level. They can change easily. Turquoise means they can change easily. They are already into the transition. They don't have to work so hard for it. Yeah? Thank you. We'll move to the next. L M. Okay, again it's eighty-five percent four. Eighty-five percent the same relevance. Four means okay. You have already worked on it so much. You have to only work a little bit to bring a change. And L M means again mental and spiritual. And this triple X. Triple X means it is. Uh, it is coming somewhere. From, I think it is wrong uh, actions. Okay? Wrong actions on the spiritual level. If the number is between 100 and 400, it is wrong thinking. And it is about that, it is like totally you are not in the proper theme of your life at all. There is no coherence in any area of your life. And as I said, the E1 and thing comes, it's always the ancestors, uh, parents, and everything. So here the person confuses, we did this, right? No. The person confuses emotional exhaustion and control with love. Now it is in that belief system that if I want to be loved, I must emotional blackmail people, you know? And that's what I think most of the mothers do or the parents do for the children, you know? I've done so much for you. Can't you love me so much, you know? Can't you do this thing for me? So that they are not giving them the space and the freedom that each soul and each spirit has come to learn their own lessons and we must allow them to be and this is again on the force so very soon the person has learned the lesson and the person is going to change and the heart chakra is shining in the sacral solar plexus chakra color yellow and orange so some emotional blocks and some you know the power game is holding them to allow the children to live their way to let them be whatever they need to do without feeling that insecurity that People will not love me. They'll let me go alone. You know, who will take care of me? So I must hold on to them. So they're holding on the emotional blackmail or the power. You know, I'm the parent or with the mind they are holding on the person's relationship. It shows that. So here, what we need to learn. We need to learn that I'm working on this chakra, from this chakra. Let me bring back my energy to my heart chakra. There is love and forgiveness. I'm going to love people. I'm going to forgive people. I'm going to accept as they are. You know, and live in gratitude. Automatically, you will see your chakra will, color will change or the frequency will change. Yes? Oh, C1. Okay. 83% is the relevance. Number two means they are almost ready to let it go. And C1 is more on the emotional level. And only one. Okay. So again, this is more connected with their emotional body and we can easily change it. This is about how they are feeling about this situation. In the person, there is a projection of the father and expectation of how the son or daughter should be. The forehead chakra is shining in the crown chakra color violet. So again, from their father, they have taken this belief system. Okay? And this is how a father has to be or a daughter has to be. You know, in the India, they say, no, um, Hindi mein bolo, yeah. or bai, jahan pe le jai, wahan chali jai, you know, but abhi nahi banta hai sa, you know? it doesn't happen now. So we need to allow again every child to blossom the way they choose to be or what lessons the soul has come to learn over here. So on the emotional level, if the children are not behaving according to them, they are going to suffer themselves. Yeah? And they are 
they are putting all the thing not from the solar plexus or navel as earlier but from the belief system what they have acquired and they are holding on to that crown chakra the belief system or the energy Eighty-one percent eight LM Alex. Okay, and again, mental, spiritual eight means they have to work. Eighty-one percent is most relevant, and because of the lack of spiritual awareness, the person's mind is fighting the great dualities within themselves. The male and female uh, principles are not in harmony. See again on the spiritual level, they are struggling with this, and uh, the forehead chakra is shining. The solar plexus chakra color. Hello. So here, what is happening? Because they are so much into the mental level only. Okay, from the solar plexus, which is more in the ego or the I, or living in the lower centers, the third eye chakra is functioning from there. The solar plexus, your lower will center, and third eye chakra is your higher will center. So here, the person is controlling the will. And not allowing the higher self to go and work with the higher will, so that's why lack of spiritual awareness, and the person is in confusion that what I need to do bring this harmony into me. And if you think the male and female principles are not in harmony, here you know our Chandra Nadi and Surya Nadi meets. So we have a masculine and feminine energy, and that is a duality there, and it's not coming in harmony. Because the person is thinking from the solar plexus chakra, isn't it beautiful how nicely the healer is finding it out? Yes. Oh, D hundred thousand. Again, totally physical, and totally the person's life is not in coherence at all. Their relationship, their uh, finances, their uh, full life. There is no. Um, Harmony over there, okay, is is all living in bits and pieces. So the person feels the inability to love, isn't it? See, not able to love. The heart chakra is shining in the root chakra color red. Why? The person is so much lower into the energy, the root chakra, the earth energy. Okay, at a very basic level, survival issues is there. The fear is there. So the person is not feeling that I can love somebody. Totally living in insecurity. So here the affirmations. When you do the analysis, also you must read the affirmations. You must not just do the analysis and leave the leave it to vibrate on its own. Hold the analysis in your hand. Read the report. Read the affirmation. Or take the PDF. I tell people take the PDF, record it in your own voice, and keep hearing it to again and again. Or keep reading it or writing it down. That's how, along with the Healy, you'll be able to change your frequency. Uh, okay, minus seventy nine percent. Interesting. What is minus seventy nine? That means it is in the subconscious level. Person is not even aware of it, but it is going to surface sometime or the other. And it is four, so they can work on it immediately when it comes. And it is more on the emotional body, and it is coming from wrong uh, thinking. Okay. So there is an intellectual idea of parenthood, and the sacral chakra is shining in the forehead chakra, color indigo. So indigo is a higher energy, okay? The ajna chakra energy, and the sacral chakra is a lower emotional energy. So that's why it's coming from the emotional body, and it is right now. Maybe the person is not a parent also, okay? But they are going to come through this when they have kids in their life, and it is on a very subconscious level. Yes. Again, minus eighty-one, two, and LM three. The person is mistaking the feelings of the body for love, mental and spiritual. Okay. The sacral chakra is shining. The heart chakra color green. See the sacral chakra is connected with your sexual energies, desires. Okay, and here the person is mistaking the feeling of the body for love because they think my desires is coming out of my heart chakra. So 
I think the heart chakra is love energy. And what I'm feeling is not my body's needs, but because I love. And that's what we call sometimes infatuation or sometimes we get carried away thinking that this is love, but it can be a biological need also. And this is coming from the mental spiritual level. It is not on the surface, on the conscious level, unconscious level or subconscious level. Energies are already manifesting there. Again, minus 82, 4, C, 12, emotion. The person has acquired a wide range of spiritual knowledge, but the actual experience of what has been read was never made. Okay, third eye chakra. Forehead chakra is shining in the solar plexus chakra color yellow. You know, there are so many people who acquire so much of knowledge because they are into the solar plexus region, mental body. They want to gather information, but they do not process it or apply it or use it. So that's why it shows over here on the emotional level, the person has acquired a wide range of spiritual knowledge, but the actual experience of what has been read was never made because they have not put their effort into it. I, I can be a spiritual speaker, with all the knowledge and ability what I have to express my, whatever I have read or acquired my information. But I may not be living into it. I may not be applying in my life. So that's what it shows over here. On the emotional level, it is on the subconscious level. It is there and they need to work on it. Yes, ma'am. This is the last one. Yeah. We did, we did this, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, ma'am, you can talk about the uh, aura therapy vibrate. Yeah, one second. Huh? I want to see if I made any notes and I have left it out. Okay, sure. let me uh, say, um, oh, some of the things, readings may not be here, no? Because it has not come here. Um, Yeah, I want to tell something about the E6, E12, E24, and E36. Okay, E12 well has come here, the other thing has not come. So E6 is telling us the pattern you are holding on from some other incarnation from your life, your karmic connection. Okay, and that some other part of you can be still somewhere in the universe going through the same karma. And when you change yourself, that karmic release will happen. Okay? So when one E6 comes, we need to learn some lessons now. And when you learn that lesson, your counterpart somewhere is learning the same lesson and a clearing is happening. In E12, the parents, even if they're alive or not alive, and you are changing the pattern, you are changing their pattern also wherever they are. They were supposed to learn a lesson, they didn't learn it, but right now, when you are learning your lesson, they also are getting benefited by it. It's so beautiful, I tell you, that how you can help others from wherever you are by doing this clearing. That your perception also will change and their perception also will change. Same thing about the grandparents. It works on the grandparents and the ancestors. Now, we could have been our own ancestors sometime. You know, they can birth in this birth now as this. And we might be healing ourselves when we are healing our ancestors. Now, or when the reading comes up and we do the vibration, it does the same thing. And that is so beautiful. And uh, when you are vibrating the healing, okay? We know that we do 38 seconds for 7 to 10 times and then 27 minutes uh, one time or two times. But make sure you are reading the affirmations, whatever he is telling you. You are consciously thinking about it. Wanting to change it without being receptive, nothing can work on you. Even the Healy's vibration. If you think, I don't know what's happening, what is happening, how can Healy do this? It is not going to do, definitely not going to do. You need to have trust. You need to be receptive. You need to be willing. And then you can see the magic happening in your life. 
when you vibrate and you can lie down or read or uh, work, think about it or you know con contemplate on it and you see then and there you can see the changes happening in your aura and in your physical body too at times yeah so i think i have expressed everything what i need to do so shall we take some questions sure i'll do my best to answer ma'am i'll stop sharing okay there there are a few questions in the chat so i'll just read it out uh first question is uh, mr v r u k how does one change beliefs does healy guide on it healy will show you what belief you are holding on to and remember any belief is not universal belief i tell in my workshops that changing belief is just like switching on and off the light it's so simple if this belief doesn't work for me at this moment i need to let go that is very important and how do you need to let go by allowing what is truth for you at that moment Let's take the example of a child when the child goes to the school the mother gives the instructions don't talk to strangers don't take sweets from strangers wait for me i'll come and pick you up you know and gives all the instructions and the child will go by it but the same child as a young adult say goes to another country to study another place to live it has to the strangers right it has to believe what other people are saying about them or guiding them because if they don't trust strangers at that time they can never grow as a child the child didn't have the ability to find out what is good for him or bad but as an adult he can do that right? but sometimes as adults also we just refuse to trust other people because our belief is so deep rooted inside from our childhood so the beliefs we need to change as the time the geographical area or how your consciousness changes or of how your life changes we need to keep adopting to new belief and let go of the old belief which is very very important for growth and change in your life does it help yes ma'am yeah. ma'am we have wish iphone uh, you can unmute yourself wish iphone had has a question um uh, ma'am sir question through chat it's better because time limitation will okay be. can so, you just type in your question yes, everybody uh, type your question yeah so next question uh, from bahavisa sa uh, so is it about healing epigenetics yeah because in healy i have studied they talk about mitochondria okay and mitochondria is on every cell of your body and that carries your genetic patterns inside it okay so when they are regenerating with micro currents they are letting go energy what the mitochondria is holding on to it i have done a epigenetic cycle myself i have done a healing i have learned the technique so i know that you can change your belief and if you read a book of bruce lifton you know it talks so much about belief and how your belief can create genetic diseases in your body and just by changing the belief you can let go of so many things what you are holding inside your body on the cell level on the molecule level also and on the epigenetic level also yes uh yeah thank you uh, ms mamta joshi i think how will come to know how to interpret for lm so let me answer here uh, there is a chart how to read this uh, codings so i think you can ask a person who has invited you and who has introduced you about the healy he will share you that chart or you can also get it on the healy academy website there is a next question from veena joshi uh, how to change past karmic karmas in present life by healing therapy every lesson every situation which happens in your life okay every challenge which comes into your life ask yourself only one question what do i need to learn from this situation of my life and if you learn your lesson you are releasing one of your karmic cycle if you refuse to learn your lesson 
same karma will be repeating again and again in your life. That's what happens in school and that's what happens in life school also. So as you start sowing seeds of what you want or what you will like to manifest in the future and letting go of what doesn't serve you anymore, you are changing your karma. Karma is nothing but thoughts, actions, okay, emotions. It's nothing. Karma is not a big thing what you are doing out there. Even on the mental level, emotional level, spiritual level, what we are thinking, you are creating a karma. Okay, so just learn the lesson and move on. That's it. So, uh, what help would it provide for someone who is feeling suicidal or has lost all uh, desires for life and dealing with depression? They need to really work on their root chakra, okay, on the vibration level. And they need to consciously, there are so many other techniques you can do. I don't think only heal you alone. And I learn, uh, run the healing on people. Along with that, I give them something to take their own responsibility. Like walking barefoot on Mother Earth, doing yoga, tadasana, pranayama, taking some responsibility, writing, you know, gratitude or making some affirmations or doing something on their own that I am willing and choosing to change my life. And gratitude is the most important way to feel that, okay, I'm alive today. Why should I suicide? As long as there is life, there is always a chance to do something in your life, isn't it? And these suicidal tendencies come from your past life also. So how much ever sometimes one person works on the physical level also, one weak moment and they go and do something, because the soul has done this again and again and again. In the human birth, you must take your power and bring this thought to an end. And you can always use Healy regularly till that pattern changes in your body. And if you are running, say, taking a one analysis today, every day don't take a new analysis. Work on one analysis frequency continuously till you are seeing a change in your thought forms and emotions. And that way, when you will be able to let go easily. Every day, finding a new frequency and every day working on it, it's like sowing a seed every day in different, different pots and thinking that why it's not growing, you know. Allow the seed to grow in one pot. Don't keep repotting it. Like that, work on one area of your life in every way. And then you see the results will come your way. Yes, Ma'am, we have the next question uh, from Vish. Uh, I have been blessed of learning Reiki, Tarot, uh, I live in Europe, but aura cleansing and reading, I have struggled. Can I learn this with Healy app? With Healy, the app is actually the new app is so self-explanatory. It talks about the chakras in details. It talks about, you know, uh, all the relevances, how it applies. Everything is there. I think definitely you can learn it. And if you keep practicing regularly, you will see your own percentage or everything will keep changing. And that's how you will learn that how it is changing or how it is clearing also. Yes. Yes, there is a question. Uh, what intention to have for a person who is unaware about the knowledge of chakras? It's not necessary that they need to have a knowledge about the chakras. Whatever intention they want to think about any area of their life, you can think about it. Harmonious relationship with my family or a steady income. The Healy will analyze which chakra it is connected with, right? So you can put your intention, whatever you choose to know that in this area of my life. Sometimes I just say, universe, you let me know what I need to know right now. And I just do that, you know. I'm open to that also. So you can choose anything what you think that you, you need to know exactly in your life. Yes. Yeah. Minakshi Jain is asking, Mujhe bhi apne chakra ke mein jana hai. So please grab the Healy. Contact the person who has invited you. Uh, 
So everyone here, please contact the person who has invited you. You will get more details on Healy. We run a separate session on how Healy works. What is the science behind quantum frequency, quantum entanglement? You will get in-depth detail about each and every therapy, how Healy is going to help you in your life, getting the chakra analysis, getting the aura analysis done, and to live in the highest vibration and highest frequency. So I would request each one of you who is not aware of Healy, get in touch with the person who has sent you this link of this training and that person will help you to get more knowledge on frequency therapy and get your life to the next level. I mean, it's so amazing, so amazing. I just can't tell you. We have another question, uh, which is how to change and bring the heart chakra in the right place using Healy. You can work. There are three things, right? You can analyze your chakra in the blue app. Or you can run in the pink cap, the uh, heart chakra alone. And along with that, go for the affirmations to activate your heart chakra. That is very, very important. And along with that, practice clearing your heart chakra by forgiveness, by love, by letting go, by loving yourself first. Self-love is the most important thing. Only when you love yourself, you can love others. So start, stop finding fault with yourself. You know, stop criticizing yourself stop criticizing others automatically your heart chakra will start blossoming yeah? and the best way to activate the heart chakra is think of the happiest moment of your life and automatically your heart chakra will start vibrating at a higher frequency it's so simple to change the energy of the heart chakra uh, there's a question can one day we can work on our different health problem any specific time for each problem I'm not able to understand the question. Then, sir, uh, can one day we can work on our different health problems together? I think so. Or any specific time for each problem? No, I think you can work on different programs, but focus on one area where you want to work. Whether it is health or whether it is your mental thing, focus on that and consistently work on this. Consistency is the key to everything, you know. And even if you're working on your health, then work on the physical body by changing your diet or put, taking more exercises or doing something like that. Don't expect only Healy to heal you 100%. Healy is frequency. Human beings is a divine frequency. So get in touch with your own potential, you know, or your own soul consciousness and work on yourself. That is the key to everything, actually. There is a question uh, from Mr. Jain. Is it uh, control the black magic? The black magic today is aura analysis thing, but yes, there is a bioenergetic defense program in Healy where it scans wherever the blocks are and it does clears those energy. Now, let me say what is black magic from according to my viewpoint. Black magic is not something is doing in the movie what they show, Kala Jadu, Jantar Mantar, nothing. It is your own thoughts which you make it so negative that that energy becomes very dense in your aura. Or sometimes you acquire other people's thoughts and not letting it go and then they become stagnant in your aura. Okay? You can call it as thought entities also or thought elementals also. Start living on your energy body. And that can become also a black magic to you, you know. So, it is, if your frequency is good and strong, nothing can come in your aura. If your aura is weak, if you're having fear, if you're living in superstitions, if you're living in belief system, you are attracting all this to you knowingly or unknowingly. So, change your lifestyle, change your thought form, change the energy what your frequency vibrating at, and use Healy to help you do that. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mamta Joshi is asking, can we do distance healing with Healy? Again, this is not the platform to answer that. So I'll say yes and no both. If you are closely connected to that person, you can do distant healing. But if it is some X, Y, Z, and if you don't know, then I don't think if you are a good healer or if you are you know, into it, able to connect with the energies, you can. Everybody cannot. This morning, my son asked me the same question. 
I said, and I answered in the same thing. I said, yes, to your daughter, you can do, but don't think your friends, friends, you are able to do that. You know, it may not be appropriate. You know, because you may not be connected on the vibration level with that person. Uh, but once we record the vibration, can we do that now? Physically. Once somebody is there physically and uh, record the vibration, can it be done then? Yes, once it is recorded for that, you can do it. But then also at that moment, if you are going through something, and if we are not able to connect to that particular program we want to run, we might bring our intellectual or our blockages there, you know. It may not be completely as that other person is there in front of you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh... Hamleta asking, uh, Madam, retina problem solved by Healy, is, is it possible? And how many days it takes to recover? Any of the problem, even the smallest of the sinus problem, nobody can answer how long it's going to take. Forget about the retina problem. It all depends on the individual person, individual karma, individual uh, vibrations, what they are vibrating at. So everything is very personal and individualized over here. Any healing technique. If somebody is guaranteeing that in these sessions you are going to get healed, I don't trust them because nobody can say what's happening in your body, in your energy field, how deep rooted your issue is. Nobody can judge that for you. Nobody. Not when the doctors are able to treat our physical body that way. Forget about the energy bodies, right? So, retina, there is an eye harmony program, it can help, but how many days we cannot say. Uh, can we check with this Healy and improvise ourselves on a daily basis? Hindu is asking. I think you can. You can improvise yourself on a daily basis by working again on one area at a time. If I want to build up my muscles, I have to work on that muscle every day. Every day, if I keep changing my exercises, to work on different muscles, it's not going to work strengthen that particular muscle, right? Just like that. Focus, consistent, and work on one area at a time. See very good results with TV. Uh, Sonal said is asking, how to manifest properly for abundance and good health? Good health and abundance are coming only from the root chakra. <laughs> Both are from the same chakra. Work on your root chakra. Let your fears go. Let any fears go. You know, simple way to let go of your fear is, this is what I do. I choose to release any known or unknown fears which I'm holding in my body right now. And I just keep breathing it out. Just blow it out. Any, the body knows where it is holding. We may not know. Okay? But make a choice that I choose to release this now. And it starts happening automatically. Yes. Uh, somebody is asking Neera Arora, is anyone allowed to download that healing, healing app? So, uh, shall I answer that? Yes. Yeah, everybody is allowed to download the app, but to use that app, you need to have a healing. So, I request you to just connect with the person who has invited you and uh, get more information and be part of it. Uh, the next question is, uh, will it cure our health issues like psoriasis? Sarda is asking. It can do everything because there is skin harmony also. But how long? Yes, we cannot answer that. And with psoriasis, I think a um, person needs to change their food. That's why I work with uh, three things in my life. That is Reiki. I've learned so many healing techniques, but I choose Reiki because it works on your frequency level, vibration level. Arch Remedies works on your mental body. The root cause of any issue is in your mental body. And naturopathy. Without treating your physical body in a nice way, it is not going to listen to you in anything, you know. You need to give sattvic food, take care of it, nourish it properly. So when you treat soul, mind and body, and if they are in harmony with each other, you can cure any diseases or you can live with those uh, imperfections or diseases happily in your life because finally the soul has to live happily and grow. Okay, live in its true nature of Satchit Ananda. So there are so many people with so many disformities in the body also. Still they excel in so many areas of their life. Isn't it? So we all have a purpose in our life. A soul has come for a purpose. 
we must find that purpose and live that purpose to the hundred percent, in spite of whatever limitations we have. So, Rajin, uh, take all the questions later with the person who has connected you. If I'm pretty sure there would be endless questions coming up, ma'am. And with the kind of wisdom and knowledge which we have received from you today, uh, I would request each one of you here, get in touch with the person who has actually given you the link for this training. And we have immense information about Healy. We have separate programs, frequency therapy for each of the chakras. Healy provides you the frequency therapy for your roots, for all your seven chakras. And along with this frequency, the what the wisdom and knowledge which we have received from ma'am so healy helps us to live in your highest potential and that's the magic what healy creates in your life i would suggest each one of you please explore healy i mean there is nothing which works uh, there is no coincidence in life everything happens with a purpose today you are attending this training there is a purpose there is a mission universe wants us to connect and it, it's like your life cannot be same ever again after this. It has to go into the next level. It has to go into the quantum level. And that's where Healy comes to your life. I always say, you have not chosen Healy. Healy has chosen you. Healy has knocked at your door with a purpose. So thank you so much, ma'am. I really want to hug you. I wish you are here with me now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you so much. Thank you, thank you each and everyone. Thank, thank you, you so I'm much for this so opportunity. Thank you so much. Grateful to God that you are part of our life. Thank you, God, for connecting me to such an inspiring person. Love you, ma'am. Thank you so much for such a insightful details you have shared with us, taken with so much of calmness, so much of patience, and just love the way you explained it. Be there with us always. Love you. Thank you, everyone, for being there today with us, having so much of patience. I'm looking forward for connecting with each one of you in the Healy community. Love you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. Thank you all.